Okay, Victor Momo from Excel Moments here with the continuation of the series on formula breakdowns of Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. Like I've said in previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. Now to the challenge at hand, which is challenge 72. This also happened to come up during the World Cup in Qatar, which is the reason why it's football or soccer related and if you're not a fan of football or soccer not to worry this is still excel so you still learn 18 or two right to the challenge it says here list the top two say countries from the runners up column who have never won the world cup so let's look at the data we have a column for winners we have a column for runners up okay so they came second pretty much so you're interested in countries here that do not appear here so we are runners up but we've never been winners okay so that's the first thing you know then the next is sort descending and filter the top two on the basis of number of appearances as runners up so it means that from those countries after you have filtered out to know the ones that are runners up that were never winners you now want to check how many times were they runners up based on how many times they were runners up you want to see the highest Okay, and you want to sort from highest to lowest, and you want to return just the top two. But you can see from the result that there are three countries. Why? Because there's a tie, you know, of Czech and Hungary for appearing two times as runners up but never being winners. So what I've done is I've just written here whatever you may call it. So don't go the workflow, just a quick, you know, as in look at how I think I would approach it. So I will get a unique list of countries from the runners up column. That's the first thing I would do. I will check that they don't appear in the winner's column. Now, once I get those that don't appear, I will then get a count of how many times they appear in the runners of column. I would, you know, either way, I can go four before five or five before four, but they have implications. Then I can sort highest to lowest by count and I can filter. Or I can also filter and then sort, you know. They would work either way, but always keep track that you don't sort one area and forget you know, to not sort the other, <laughs> you know, that can mess you up. But let's go to a new sheet and we can start up here. Um, I practice these days with these kind of challenges because I know that I may need to reuse, you know, some um, variables a couple of times to use a let to define some variables. Sometimes I over define, but I'd rather define than not define. So let me start up. I would say let and I create a variable to represent my winner's column. Maybe because it's in Columbia, I may just call it B. And B would represent here, you know. Okay, so that's my B. I would create another variable, maybe I call that C, and I want that to represent my runners up column. I know that I need a unique list of countries from the runners up column. So I could call that variable maybe D. Okay, and it means that D is unique of C because C is my runners up column. Hope that's clear to everybody, right? And then I may just spit out D, which is, uh, you know, the unique list uh let's just take that out okay right so that's the unique list of you know countries here from the runners of column so now what we need to check two things at the same time or you know depending on how we choose to approach it do they appear in the winners column how do we know that we can use the count if to say if it, you count how many times they appear there and it is zero then it means they are not there the other way is you could use a match and you will see these two approaches, you know, even on the LinkedIn page. You could use a match. If match doesn't find the country, then it gives you a hash NA, right? Which means it does not appear. So when you now get those countries that actually do not appear in the winner's column, you now need to get a count of how many times they appear on the runner's column. So let me proceed here. I will create another variable. I could call that variable. I think I've used BCD. Let me call it E. And I do an if here. And I'll do a count if so I'm counting in the winners column which is B you know how many times these countries which is this unique list I have here which is my D you know how many times you know D appears in B okay so now this could give me answers of zero or you know one two three four right now you know that in Excel zero is false any other number there would be true so what it means is that if this is zero you know which is the false that's what you're interested in 
you know, those are the countries you're interested in. That would be the force of this expression. What I'm trying to get at here is that some of us may decide to say, okay, if count if equals to zero, then this, or if count if greater than zero, then this. The point is that if count if gives you zero, this was an interesting construct I saw, you know, online. If the count if gives you zero, that's automatically a false because every other number would be non-zero, which would be a true. So what it means is that the result of this, which you're interested in, should be the false, okay? So you skip the true, you go to the false. So when it is zero, meaning that it doesn't appear on the winner's column, what do you want? You now want to get how many times it appears on the runner's column, okay? You can decide to write it equals to zero, you know, just for, um, what will I say, readability and for people to understand what, you know, I like the thoughts behind this. So now, on the false side, meaning that if it doesn't appear in the winner's column, let's get the count of it in the runner's up column. So it's the same count if the only thing that is changing here is that we are counting from the runner's up column which that variable is called variable C, right? So we are counting C comma D. Right? So we close the account if, we close the if, and let's spit out this variable E, okay? Now, keeping track of your variables is also an interesting challenge, right? Some people may want to use longer names, you know, more readable and more user-friendly names, right? Of course, your formula is going to be longer, but for readability and, you know, tracking and, um, you know, editing your formula and troubleshooting, that may be the best way to go. But if you can keep track with single length variables, you know, that's still fine. So now we have, you know, the counts of how many times they appear in the runners up column. Maybe what I should do is to add an H stack here. Let me show the country side by side the count. That makes more sense. Okay, so now this is it. So we have the countries and we have the count. All the ones that are zeros here are those ones. Of course, if the country appears on the runners up column and you're getting a count of it and it's giving you a zero, something is funny there, right? So, but understand it all the ones that appear as zero here are those that actually you know show up in the winner's column so the zero here is like part of our filter so that we can filter those ones out because you can see that argentina france germany brazil and if you're conversant with football you know that all these countries have actually won the world cup so that's the reason why they are showing us zeros but let's not um you know get flummoxed by that so we have what we need now the next thing is we want to filter maybe to get the top two how do I do that? Very simple. I get what the second largest number is here. And any number that is equal to that or greater than that, any number that is at least that, you know, appears in my top two. I'll take that again. In saying that if the second highest score in a test is 90, second highest score in a test is 90, anybody who scored at least 90, meaning 90 and above, you know, is definitely in the top two. That's what it is. So how do you get the second largest number here? You could use the large function, right? You know, large of this comma two. So it means that two is our second largest number. So it means any number here greater than or equals to two, you know, is in our top two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my formula and, you know, in front of the H stack, I'm going to put a filter because I want to filter to just the top two right so now i will put an include criteria what's my include criteria going to be my include criteria is where this number is greater than or equals to the second largest number. don't forget how did we get these numbers what variable is that that variable here is our e because this if count if is what gives us these numbers which is variable e so what we are testing here is is e greater than or equal to large of e comma two that's what we are testing okay if it's at set top three this would be e comma three so you close the filter and you close the let. Okay, now you see that technically we already have what it is that we want. Okay, the only thing is that yes, it looks like it's already sorted, but it's not really sorted. If the data changes, you know, the result will be obvious that this is just a flu. So what you need to do is then include, you know, the sort. Okay, so we put a sort here, right? And let me try and fix this here. Okay, so that's the array. So now the sort index, because you are sorting based on the second column, right? That's where the numbers are. So that's number two. And then the sort order, you want to do this descending. That's minus one. Okay. So that's that. So now we've closed the sort here. So we need one more bracket to close the let. Okay. And now we have our result. 
which exactly matches what we are requested for now this is perfect as it is you know the only thing i'm thinking about in my head is that if you do like a top five or top six it gets to a point where those countries that show up with a zero you know would appear so what i mean is that assuming we're not doing a top two like we have here you know and we are doing like a top five okay now you see that we still look fine by the time we do like maybe say a top seven you know you start to see all those countries that had zeros but the top two you know seem to mask that so that may be something you know that you may want to you know you may want to fix okay that may be something that you may want to fix and how how do you fix that you may just include the criteria that you know this number is not equal to zero because really that's still you know a key criteria because that number you know being equal to zero means that it appears on the winner's column technically so what you could do let's see if i don't mess this up here um so i could close you know i could instead of in the include criteria here where i'm filtering to just top two i can say okay yes do that let me take out this other portion i'm not exactly my glasses so i'm struggling a little <laughs> but that's fine okay so here now that's one criteria this will give us the top two I can then multiply that by the second criteria. The second criteria is that E, which is these numbers here, E is not equal to zero. Okay? So that could be the second criteria, right? Then I close this. Now I've closed the filter. So for the sort now, I repeat the same thing. I'm sorting based on the second column. And you know, I'm doing minus one, meaning that it's descending. Then I close the sort and I close the letters. Okay. so now you can see that even though i did a top seven which was supposed to include those countries but it wouldn't include them because once a country appears on the winner's column it's not supposed to appear you know in your results so i only wanted to do that for completeness for the top two you know i was okay with what i had but the truth is that as that number increases you can start to see you know some countries that should not appear at all that's why i decided you know to add that part so i hope um you've enjoyed this formula breakdown it's um i know it's challenging you know sometimes <laughs> following along you could get a little you know complex but um you can always you know rewind you can always send me a personal question you know through maybe the comment section if you want me to break something else down and i'll be more than glad to do that so if you like this video uh, please hit the like button you know also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out